How does the new Hoka Stilo LD compare to the Super Spike King, the Nike Dragonfly? Let's get into that. <laughs> Now like many YouTubers, let's go over some disclaimers. No one's gonna view this video before you, beautiful runners, and no one's paying me to make this video. Obviously, because I have such a massive sub count. <laughs> so the way that we're gonna determine the winner is by ranking each component of each shoe. So, the components that we're gonna be ranking is the upper, outsole, midsole, value slash price, and the durability. The shoe with the highest ranking within a component gets a point. The shoe with the highest points wins and is the best shoe out of the two in my opinion. Let's get started with the upper. The upper is very light, breathable, and looks great especially in this colorway. But it feels kind of cheap. However, the main thing that disappointed me when it came to the upper was the laces. Now I think it's because Nike spoiled me with their laces. Like in the Vaporfly, there's in Victories, and even the Dragonflies. But these laces are just your standard cheap shoelaces. Heck, even New Balance's Super Spikes have better lacing than this. And that's saying something. I'll give the upper a 7 out of 10. Now let's get to the upper on the Dragonfly. The laces. I love what Nike's been doing with the lacing for the race day shoes and spikes. You really don't have to worry about your shoes untying, and I'm pretty sure they're lighter than normal laces. Now for the actual upper, it's very breathable, it is lightweight, and it looks amazing. I mean, the Dragonfly is just a very iconic spike, so the upper is just an amazing piece of art. I love everything about this upper. I mean, the Matumo hole in the back, this thing for added comfort. I mean, of course I went over the laces. I mean, there's nothing to complain about. I mean, I give this upper a 10 out of 10. Outsole now. I really like what Hoka did with the outsole. It has really good traction for those big long turns. I also like the actual spikes it comes with. It looks lighter, but still has the function of a normal spike. I could be completely wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this is shark skin. But I hate how it's only on one side. It's there for durability of the shoe. But if you look on the other side, you can see some wear and tear. So to me, that's pretty dumb. I give the outsole an 8.5 out of 10. The Dragonfly. So, from the research I've done, they use an algorithm to figure out what's the perfect traction. And to be honest with you, I think they're absolutely smart in doing that. This bike has the same design for the traction, and I used it for a cross country course, and it worked perfectly fine. And I've used these countless times on the track, both of them, and for my testing, they both look amazing with the traction and again i have nothing to complain about 10 out of 10 midsole so i'm just gonna rate it now a 6 out of 10. now i really wanted to love this spike i really did but let's just get to the tech it is a eva type film you know boring right and i mean a carbon fiber plate which is good but for my testing, it doesn't really pair with this EVA type film. I feel like a carbon fiber plate works better with a super film like ZoomX film or even the Sarkinese film. And also, when I started sprinting in these, my toes started burning up for some reason. So that's something to look out for. Back to the dragonflies. The midsole is made out of the great ZoomX film, and I really love ZoomX film. I ran in the Ozone Victories, the Nike Invincible run. Vaporflies and of course the dragonflies. So I can tell you, Zoom X foam is just amazing. The dragonflies doesn't even need a carbon fiber plate. It has a PBX plate and it works amazingly with the Zoom X foam. Now it could be me, but I think the PBX plate in the dragonflies is just more springier than the Hoka carbon fiber plate for some reason. But yeah, this midsole makes it feel like a vaporfly, just lighter and better traction. If I could, I would give the midsole an 11 out of 10, but I can't, so 10 out of 10 for the midsole. Now we're getting into durability. The foam on the upper looks like it's holding up pretty well, and the springiness of the carbon fiber plate will undoubtedly last long. However, what worries me is the teeth, 
we can already see that it's not holding up as well. So I'll give this an 8.5 out of 10. Okay, so hear me out. From my research and testing, the durability is actually really good. People even use a spike for cross country. Zoom X one isn't even that fragile as people make it out to be. I ran so many miles in my Vaporfly and the Zoom X foam hold up pretty well. I give the durability a 9.5 out of 10. Price. Let's go for the Dragonflies first to mix it up. $150. Now, when you hear that, you may be like, Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. However, when it comes to a super spike, this is on the cheapest side. For example, Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And it's really versatile. This is made for the two mile and up, but many people prefer this over any super spike for the mile too, and even down to the 800. So people have been using this for the 800 and up. That's how versatile it is, and it's only $150. Pretty cheap for a super spike. I give this a 9.5 out of 10 for value slash price. Time for the hooker. It's $160, so $10 more expensive, and it sucks more. 8.5 out of 10. In conclusion, the Hoka Silos LD is not a bad spike. It's far from a bad spike. But compared to the Dragonfly, it just cannot compete. Even other super spikes I've tried have been better. However, if this wasn't a super spike, this would be the best normal spike. That leads me to this factor. If you want something in the middle, not too crazy like a dragonfly, but you still want that carbon fiber plate, get the Hoka Zelo LD. But if you want the best of the best, go for the dragonfly.